Welcome folks to BitScience YouTube channel. This is a tutorial series on Salesforce Lightning Web Components where we explore advanced functionalities to supercharge your Salesforce experience. In today's episode, we will explore into some exciting topic that will take your development skill to the next level. These topics are Surface Lightning Web Component, Expose Property to App Builder, Using Lightning Map, Populating a app builder pick list dynamically. Quick actions for lighting web components. Wrapping a lighting web components. So whether you are a seasoned developer looking to expand your capture or a newcomer eager to unlock the power of Salesforce development, you have come to the right place. Without further ado, let's get started. Namaste. Welcome to Bit Science. Unlock the secrets of life and technology with our comprehensive biology and computer science education. So if you need to render your component to a app builder app page, what all you need to do? Correct. As a target, we have to declare lightning underscore underscore app page. That's the first thing we need to do. So this we have already tried. We have to expose it and we have to set the target. Now, for this particular target, if you want to pass money, any property. So when you drag and drop, these properties can be set. So we are using property list view, label list view. So this property is coming from the component. Markers title is coming from the component JavaScript. And the label you can give any. So when you drag this component to the app builder app pages, these property, which is list view and list title will appear in the properties pan, which you can configure, which you can pass the value, you can choose the value for it. So when your component will run, these two value will be passed to these properties. That's how you can pass a property to your component in the specific builder. Now we'll try our first first time we are going to use lightning map i hope you all know what is map and uh, when you work with the lightning hyphen map you are actually working with the google map this map requires map markers markers like this this markers will need a location where the marker will happen so you can pass location as city country or you can also pass it as a latitude longitude to work with Lightning Map, you don't need any Google API key to access the Google Map. So we'll try that. We are also going to see if you need if you have a pick list and you want to populate the pick list choices for the app builder properties, you can specify the data source and you can separate the values with the comma and put that values here. So three, four, five, it is okay. But if you have more than those values, plus sometimes it's dynamic in nature. So for that, you can use an Apex class to pass the values to a data source. So in this case, every option is a row. So you have to create a row choice and the collection of row choice will be passed to the data source. So how are we going to do that. We don't have any exercise to work on this pick list dynamically, but we are just showing you option uh, in future. If you need to do that, you should know that this option is available. So how we'll uh, work with it, you create a class which will extend dynamic pick list. There is a method get values. So this will help you to populate the value. So I'm writing a SOCAL query to get all city. All right, I'm storing it in the my cities as it's an aggregate function because I have grouped by a city. Now I'm creating a dynamic pick list rows, single instance of that. I'm iterating my cities that I have received at line number eight. I'm retrieving only city and using that city variable to create a new data row in the visual editor. This data row I'm going to add in my dynamical 
pick list rows and then return that rows. So when you are going to call this method, when you call city pick list, this will call that method get values and data source will be loaded with that. Okay. We can we already know how to use Apex class to write a circle and wire it. So we'll use that technique to get our city and country. Okay. So that part is sorted. Second is the quick action. You can also launch quick action and you can launch your web component as a quick action. All right. So I hope you all, all know what is quick action. Okay. So quick action will perform the action quickly without navigating to, uh, uh, without navigating a lot actually. So that's why we call it quick action. So in a quick action, you can perform multiple action like a create record, update record, assigning a task, launch a visual force page or launch a web component. So if you need your web component to be launched as a quick action, then you have to enable your web component for that. How? You'll set the target as a record action, lightning underscore underscore record action. And you can pass any configuration property to that. So because quick action, if you're using, let's say, create a record, you don't need a screen to do that. So if you need a screen in a quick action, there are actions that happen at the background. There are actions that happen in the foreground. So mostly your uh, object specific actions are a screen action. So if you're performing screen action, you can choose action type as a screen. So your component can be launched from a quick action screen. So when you launch quick action, your component will be launched there. Okay. Sometime we need to uh, call one component into another and we know how we can do that. We can use kebab case. So you can use kebab case to call one component into another and uh, that way your component will have that child component in the body. Sometimes you don't need a parent child hierarchy. You are calling a component inside another component body just to you know wrap them properly. So the uh, node actions, you know, parent node, child node, changing that is kind of a little difficult in those scenarios. So you can surface your lightning component from the body of aura component. Okay. And uh, for that, your uh, component will be called in the global action. For the quick action, yes, you can just change the quick action record specific or object specific. You can just uh, change the metadata and it's done. But for the global action, you are going to wrap your LWC into an Aura component and then only that LWC can be launched as a global action. So they are two different approach for, for two different types of actions. Okay, and this is how you are going to wrap your LWC in Aura component. So there is an Aura component tag you will call inside the body of Aura component your LWC. While calling LWC, you are not going to use kebab case inside Aura context. In Aura context, you use namespace colon the name of the component. But yeah, it is case sensitive. So if you have declared D small, it needs to be called as D small. And there you have it. With these advanced techniques in your toolkit, you are well equipped to harness the full potential of Salesforce Lightning Web Component. Stay tuned for more tutorial and don't forget to like and subscribe our channel for future updates. Thank you for watching and happy coding.